taking a look back at another week of news from Cupertino, this week's Apple Loop includes all the details on iOS 9.3, the continuing anger over the removal of the headphone jack in the next Ebony, Microsoft's attack on the iPad Pro, Apple's potential purchase of Time Warner, the impressive sales of the MacBook, Apple Music's subscriber numbers, the problems with Apple News statistics, Jason Smell's report card on Apple in 2015, and a new secret feature in iOS. Apple Loop is here to remind you of a few of the very many discussions that have happened around Apple over the last seven days and you can read the weekly digest of Android news here on Forbes. Here comes iOS 9.3 Apple has released the next iteration of iOS to developers for final testing. Notching the version number up to 9.3, this build along with the requisite bug fixes focuses on the educational environment, with support for multiple IVs and classroom management. Highlights include iPad multi-user support called Shared iPad which enables students to log on to any iPad and get full access to their apps, books, documents and places them exactly where they left off. Photo ID will show the student's picture once they've logged in to avoid iPads getting mixed up during the class. Young students get a more basic version accessed with a simple four-digit PIN. Also breaking new ground is the classroom app which allows the teacher to control all the iPads of the students in their class for example to open a particular app and even jump to individual students iPads to monitor work screen view. Meanwhile Apple School Manager is a hub for teachers to compile courses, purchase class books and apps, track individual iPads and more. Apple has also addressed smart screen filtering to give out more blue light at night to help sleep patterns more moments in the user interface where 3D touch can be used, and a number of updates to notes, health, news, and the Apple Watch client. Developers can download the update now, and a public release is expected in mid-February. More details here. Can you hear what's coming around the corner? The idea that Apple will finally drop the 3.5mm headphone socket on the next Ebony, relying on wireless protocol for the lightning connector for audio output, has been generating a lot of interest and surprise from many people. Do you know who wasn't surprised? The headphone manufacturers. The Virgis Vlad Savor covered the issue while reporting on CBS. The people who don't seem to be particularly perturbed by this potential development are headphone makers themselves. I've spoken with many of them during this year's CES and none feel threatened by or unprepared for Apple's rumored removal of the headphone jack. There are two reasons for this, one is that almost every headphone manufacturer, major or minor, has some sort of wireless product to offer prospective Ethany 7 owners. Only the truly premium, audiophile class vendors, whose products aren't intended to be used with mobile devices anyway, don't have a Bluetooth variant to offer. The big names like Sennheiser and Audio-Technica are already working on entire portfolios of high-end wireless headphones, and others like Bose have been developing the technology for years. Nothing new on this front. More at The Verge. And if you thought that the headphone socket was sacrosanct and would never be removed, here's three more pieces of Apple hardware that could be taken off the Epony to make a better smartphone in the future. Microsoft going after the iPad Pro part of marketing is all about ensuring that in the obvious comparisons between different companies, you have the winning device. Microsoft's Surface Pro 4 is on solid ground when it comes to a comparison with the iPad Pro, and senior communications manager Dan Laycock has not been reticent with that opinion at CES. Microsoft really wants you to only carry one device for tablet and PC use, whereas the iPad Pro is always going to be a companion device. The strategies are very different. At one point in time, Apple declared that if there's a stylus, that's failure. We're a huge believer in the pen, we know our customers love it. So to see Apple do something that feels a little bit similar, that is clearly skewed for a bigger screen, and more productivity built in, and the ability to use a pen. We don't see it as a one-to-one -one comparison, because this is a full PC, you're running full apps. Depending on your point of view, the Surface Pro 4 is a device that can do everything demanded and expected of it and is a superb portable computer while the iPad Pro is an up-gunned tablet with limited support for bespoke enterprise devices, or the iPad Pro is a distillation of mobile technology and the Surface Pro is last decade's vision of what it means to be a computer.